वेलकम टू सीसीआर टीवी टुडे वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस अबाउट प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ चिल्ड्रन इन स्ट्रीट चिल्ड्रन एबंडन चिल्ड्रन मिसिंग ऑल दीज आर बिग इश्यूज अक्रॉस अवर कंट्री सो देर इज अ हेल्पलाइन अक्रॉस इंडिया टू हेल्प सच चिल्ड्रन एंड इन गोवा ऑल्सो वी हैव दिस हेल्पलाइन लास्ट वन एंटायर वीक there is a celebration across india about this dosti with helpline of children so today we are gathered here in the studios of ccr tv to discuss about this children in the streets so with me to discuss this i have a distinguished panel i have uh, father maverick fernandes who is director child line caritas I have uh, Bosco George, who is DIG of Goa Police. At the same time, his IG presents. I have Esther Torres, who is CWC chairperson of North Goa, and I have Dr. Silvano Sapeco, who has been our GMC's uh, ex uh, forensic doctor and now a frequent caller. for concerns of children he is so much concern now also when i came here first thing he said it pains when we see these children of suffering outside begging outside so these issues we will discuss now i will first like to ask uh, father mavri as director of helpline of children tell us how this functions in goa yeah uh we function this helpline on the 1098 and most of the cases come through this calls mm. but besides that as you said there are callers who also directly inform about different cases different situations of children on the streets yeah we have noticed that a uh, lot of children are being brought uh, are accompanying many times their parents mm. but very irresponsibly taking them for begging Uh, leaving them on the streets yeah. so this becomes a very difficult situation to handle the time that we take them uh, rescue them and present them to the um, concerned authorities the parents or someone comes and presents themselves as uh, as in charge of them and the regulations afterwards determines that they have to be given back to the parents, parents. so this becomes again that the vicious circle goes on that the parents also come and continue this begging of children yeah. so this is the main situation at yes. present that is going, yeah. holding on and, and this is not knows how to handle it now that is where we are yes oh, yeah. yeah so i think it is a perfect situation for us to ask our police top officer that exactly how to handle this you see <laughs> police are in a very <laughs> they are also you know a very difficult situation, situation. Yeah. so because uh, today the laws uh, when a officer presents himself before yeah. a lady before yeah. a children yeah. there are certain norms correct you cannot be, call them to the police station you cannot uh, keep them in your custody bringing being in the police station i mean there are too many regulations yes 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 many times the police even are nervous how to uh, how do you tackle yeah. so the first thing is if a child is missing or something of that okay we will take down yeah. missing person and all this flash i mean all the regulatory things yeah. also you, these yeah. poxo yeah. juvenile justice all, all laws these, also yeah. come into play yes they are all meant for the be- welfare benefit of the yeah. child yes but then after sometimes we are also caught up with too many issues and yes. sometimes the priorities keep changing correct you may have the child at that time yes it is uh, we all you have to take care yeah. but then after there are too many other things yeah. you you start dabbling in this there yeah. is all the security there is a law and order yes. and in the the precious time is lot but yes. no justification but even then it's a very very difficult situation, situation. very challenging yes. situation yes. for the police in so here we come to cwc because you are the people immediately whenever such a issue comes of a child abandoned child missing child all this people say take to cwc correct and then from you to police so this journey you will have to explain to people so the thing is like this the child welfare committee is constituted under the juvenile justice act correct 
now the act is divided into two parts one part of it is uh, looks into only issues related to children who are in need of care and protection yes. now who are these children who are in need of care and protection these could be children who are on the streets yes these could be children who are into begging Correct. either on their own or Correct. their parents are forcing them yes. to do so these could be uh, children who are orphans these could be children who are living uh, with you know uh, parents who are suffering from serious diseases maybe Correct. HIV or cancer and all. It could be a child even from a family who's been abused or who's been neglected for that point. The another part of Juvenile Justice Act deals with children who are in conflict with law. Correct. Now, who are these children? These children uh, have, are basically have. victims. We will not call them as accused. They accused. are victims, whereby they have somewhere come. You know, uh, there is an interface between them and law and order situation, and that's why they have become a victim of that. System and they have come to the they go to juvenile justice board, whereas the earlier categories of children which I explained come to us. Now the child welfare committee consists of five people, uh, chairperson including me. There are four members on our board, and we are there for three years. Okay, every three years a new committee comes in. Yes. And what is our role? Our major role is to rehabilitate. And reintegrate child with the family. See today, I think even the policy makers. Yesterday, I was in Delhi uh, to, a, you know, there was a module for CWC which was inaugurated yesterday by NCBCR, and across the policy makers, even at national and uh, you know state level, we feel that the best possible way where the child can grow up holistically is a family, and the child care institutes are the last option. So, what is the role of the CWC? The moment a child is rescued, it, the child could be rescued from, you know, by the police. He could have, he or she can be brought before us. Child and brings them to us. Sometimes it is, you know, individual uh, citizens who may come to us say, so and so child is getting neglected in a family and brings. Uh, in many cases, it can be the child he, he or she also can come to us. It need not be some adult person uh, bringing the child to us. So our role then is to inquire about the child. We normally tell child line since our district child protection unit is more or less not functioning. We don't have staff. Mm. Uh, Department of Women and Child is in the process now of hiring people. So most of the time when we are handling these cases, we see they are our eyes and ears. We, we are not on the field. They are. So normally during the course of the inquiry, we feel that we need to know more about this child. So the child line is requested to conduct a home visit or a social investigation report. Home visit will focus mainly on the family. Social okay. investigation will look at uh, the child surrounding. What are the uh, you know uh, encouraging factor and what are the push and the pulls for the child to grow up? Yeah. There may be some factors which are uh, contrary to his growth, whereas there might be some very positive things in that community. Which can act as uh, you know triggers for the child's development. So the SIR will look at all this. So based on the SIR or the HIR, the CWC then decides that okay, if the child is fit to be put in a child care institute, mm -hmm. an order is passed and the child is sent to a child care institute which are registered with TWCD. Uh, temporary till the inquiry goes on, he or she is kept in Apnagar. We don't keep a child for long time in Apnagar. Uh, abandoned children are basically uh, kept in a uh, adoption agency. We have okay. one in North Goa. Mm. So the children are immediately kept there. Mm. Uh, if uh, the parents, uh, you know, details are known, then we give 60 days period for the parent, the proper mm. agreement on and sign and we tell them, you have 60 days period to uh, tell that, you know, whether you want the child back. After 60 days, the child is free for adoption. Mm. So, lot of things besides placing the child in the child care institute, simultaneously work with the families also, counsel them if they need to be sent to, you know, a counseling center or any linkages with the department for uh, sponsorship for funds or, uh, you know, linking to education, schools, all that is looked up yeah. by the CWC. Yeah. Now, the biggest issue comes here. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sapeko is there. He is the one person who calls for help, for child help. So you have seen what is the scenario. Scenario looks like 
there is nothing concrete coming out right when you see what is you are feeling when you see some child begging child and you call helpline what you expect and what exactly you get at the end of the day please tell the first entity that i want to tell is that a child according to the present situation of law is the newborn child from day of birth zero till the age of 18 is considered as child a boy or a girl or a transgender includes within this domain okay. now my expectation is something pathetic and full of empathy towards them when I, now today i have just come here from all the way from margaon to here because i have been to margaon to help somebody so during the travel at every junction of intersection i see a mother and a child i am full of empathy i want to be a helper to them by calling the helpline they take my details and by the time they come at every intersection even now if you go at abad faria there are children and mothers asking for arms every morning the situation why you go near the uh, jetty where the casinos are going there you find plenty of mothers and children begging and every time we give a call to the 1098 yes we are coming i can see the people after some time the child line people going interacting but possibly what happens they do not have any powers which the police department has if the police department were to extend or escort them they would be in a better position of empathy especially a woman police officer would have been a great facilitator to ensure that there could be amelioration it reminds me of the times during uh, 1961 till 1981 there was no begging in goa they couldn't see any beggars on the road side it was such a nice sight to see why because the providoria was active any child any beggar found would be immediately taken in the home for provider they would be well looked after and well nurtured good food would be provided and they would be kept over there till the that time so this was the entity i do not know now why the failure has come from such social institution still i give my hats off to opm obra pela proteção da mulher it is the home where the unwed mothers are kept the babies are delivered and the babies are well nurtured and then through the government agency be it the cwc or the juvenile justice board they are given for adoption for the people who do not have children and they are well supervised by the probation officers as on date everyone who has been rescued there are no probation officers by the directorate of child and women welfare these are the small gray areas which are existing and i'm sure that if at the end of the day we have good facilitators like maybe appointment of ambassadors who could be a liaison people with the police department ensure that we come to the rescue and we give relief to such type of destitutes who don't have father food. the issue needs to be first analyzed in the sense you have these centers across goa helpline <laughs> that is child like what kind of data you get who are these children yeah. because just saying that migrant children will not solve our issue so who are these children and what kind of cases you get okay just to give you an understanding of in goa uh, or caritas itself runs three different units yeah. that's uh, the north goa of child line is under caritas goa then we run another unit at the railway station in madgaon mm. and one at the bus stand at uh, mapsa so these are units under caritas goa Correct. besides we have the south goa unit which is run by the don bosco fathers mm. and the nodal office of uh, child line uh, which is managed by the nirmala sisters okay. now these are the five different area and uh, five different units which are directly involved in the grassroots level yeah. meeting children engaging with them discussing their issues more and more what we find here one there is no uh, proper plan of rehabilitation in the state mm. for children who can be who are rescued and therefore in the absence of such a rehabilitation plan for such children uh, the cwc also remains helpless yeah. because the moment the parents come again they have to release because the law is demanding that yeah. and in that absence what happens is the cwc 
uh, since they release, they are back into begging. So this vicious cycle continues. The, the, the department, the uh, department and child uh, yes. development which should have come into play. They have to come bring all the stakeholders together mm -hmm. and prepare a plan for the state. Mm -hmm. Now when we are saying as Madam also said, it's not just children uh, from the lower strata of mm -hmm. the income. There are also from families who require this assistance. Mm -hmm. There are a number of children who are on the streets are people from who are migrants. Now their parents come also many times seasonally over here for the festivals during the season. Uh, so they come to beaches. sell those uh, trickets. They are, and so you don't find them only in the cities. They are in the beaches. They are in the marketplaces. Mm -hmm. They are the Saturday ma markets. markets. So these are the different areas where a rehabilitation plan along with all the stakeholders working for the children's welfare have to come together and design something. Yes. So this is a gap that exists, exactly. which we need, needs to be addressed very, uh, very systematically. Yeah. Where the police has got a role, CWC has got a role, the social organizations have department, and the people have got a role, where the department has to coordinate, coordinate. the sector. So the point uh, uh, here is very important, that there seems to be no effective coordination. Each agency is working. So it will not work in that way. So what do you suggest, uh, Bosco, sir, on I this? I, I, I don't know how, uh, because we, uh, we are like, uh, we have to be on the periphery, because we are yes. in uniform and we are dealing with children. Yes. A few, uh, couple of years back, when uh, there was the street providence that came into play. Correct. We had a problem from the police point is, abundant people on the street. Yes. Now, what do you do with that? It became a real problem. Okay. Every neighbor ca calls up and tells yes. that, you know, so-and-so is here, suddenly he has come over here. And uh, the police, after the help, and say, what do we do? You cannot take him. So, uh, I, for me, it was an eye-opener when, uh, because I live in the Siridhau village, and it so happened that someone just came and left someone at he was in bad shape, his legs were this thing, and in front of the church. And uh, since my wife goes to school, so she saw it and she told me, you better do something. I said, what do you mean I do something? The police has no role in this, please. We have enough, our hands are full. But she said, she was persistent that you have to do something. So I started checking out which organizations. And then I came to know that Street Providence yeah. has a uh, they take up this issue. And then I, because they did that, then once we had a meeting of all the police station uh, in charges yeah. at police headquarters, I called the organizer and I told him that, see, I will introduce you to our offices and give you a number and all, so that, because they even have similar problems. So that became a start for at least lifting some of these people, people from who are the just street. abundant. Because mm -hmm. naturally, mm -hmm. they are scared of lifting. Suppose he's some accused, suppose he's some yes. this thing. So at least the police are in the loop. So Correct. we formed a sort of uh, this thing wherein the pe uh, before he picks up the person, he informs the police that so and so person. Because you know, sometimes you find missing persons. Yes. So at that point of time, you may find also that person may have been on the street okay. or some this thing. So there is some fingerprinting, there is some identification. Yeah. So I do not know, maybe something on that ground can work out with child yes. uh, also. Uh, yeah. So that you know, because we can't be the custodians of the children. That is there. Yeah. It has to be family, social organization, but yes, the police can be uh, Likes and yes. to help Catalyst. out in yes. these things. Okay, we can keep uh, this thing. And nowadays, we are having at uh, the police stations to keep a place where the children can be kept yeah. and all the new police station. So, TK for some time till uh, you bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. So, in that way, the police can be a catalyst. But, uh, but otherwise, it's a huge social uh, concern. concern. It is a huge social concern. So, CWCs often these cases come. And of late, as um, Sir said, that lot of kids are seen begging. And when we, as a journalist, when I interact, because I am also working for disability sector, children with disabilities, they also come into picture. So when this kind of things come in, 
how you as the cwc and you come under the department of women and child correct so how exactly that aspect is handled by the department we don't directly come under the department okay. basically a separate body but we yes. work in collaboration yes. with the dwcd because our infrastructure no, my point is now uh, father says they are helpline people call children are there what is to be done police also have their limitations so they are willing to be helping into the this but where exactly this children should go so the, that decision has to come through the no, department no, the point is this sir. it is just not goa which is grappling with children who are on yes. the streets yeah uh, like i said uh, we uh, we the majority of children who come to goa are from karnataka and maharashtra okay now here also the they are coming with the labor force this uh, labor force they are coming support. mostly with their parents hmm. and uh, like father mentioned uh, seasonal uh, people who come here yeah. to sell things now many of the time these children are not forced into begging this becomes like a uh, you know an extra income they are they are there they are there and people are there to give therefore they are there to take my advice then to people who are you know are pained by seeing all this is also that you don't remove money from your pocket and give to the children it is as simple as that it has to come from us also we cannot be uh, every time putting an onus on there are children who are begging there are uh, parents who are begging you don't give it is as simple as that when people stop giving money there will be no begging but the point is this it's it is not that easy okay now with this new module which the ncpc are uh, you know inaugurated yesterday it's very clear that the collector of the district will be playing an important role okay i remember when we uh, did a rescue uh, when the rescue operation was on in north uh, we did a, you know we did a mapping of panjim and mapsa especially mapsa bus stand and uh, we had a discussion with our collector telling her that you know there is this group of families who which comes from a particular district of maharashtra therefore you as a collector need to coordinate with that collector and ensure that migration is stopped i mean adults can come here nobody can stop you from migrating to another state for work or selling or whatever but if they are getting children then there is a problem we also realize that many of the time these children who are coming here are already enrolled in a child care institute back home okay ha huh? so they are brought here for holidays diwali holidays ho gaya गणपति है ब्रिंग डैम नाउ बोडगेश्वर तुम आई मीन दिस वीक सेंट फ्रांसिस नवीनर्स विल स्टार्ट देर ऑफ द बोडगेश्वर एंड इट गोज ऑन सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ सो दे हैव देअर प्लान मेड अप जस्ट लाइक एनी कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर फ्रॉम ओल्ड गोवा दे विल गो टू पैनजीम फ्रॉम पैनजीम मापसा फ्रॉम मापसा मरगाव सो देर थ्री मंथ्स पीरियड इज ओवर दे आर अर्निंग एज वेल एज बैगिंग द चिल्ड्रन ऑल्सो इन टू सेलिंग so when we were contacting people in maharashtra we came to know that some of these children are enrolled in the schools so the collector also has a very important role not just dwcd dwcd no, but but uh, here i would like to tell you collector according to our indian uh, administrative system are burdened with so many like police only everything comes to collector so many times it so happens that collector some of them are not aware that this particular function comes under them no, but that that cannot be a reason that cannot be excused but i am saying that in such situation children will definitely suffer no, but so I, how we I, go about it i remember it? north goa collector uh, did take some initiative okay. at least with the mapsa group uh, i remember she had written to that particular district collector and there was some movement happening later on i don't know but again the municipality <coughs> in that particular area especially in the city area municipalities also have to be active yes. every time you see somebody is encroaching on your land yeah. you go you monitor you take action they also have to be part police can just be a, you know of yes. assistant they don't want to get their hands dirty doing this work because they and it's rightly so na they are for law and order why would they run up the beggars and identify that's not their job so their job is more to provide assistance they say if you if there is a law and order situation we are there with you but don't tell us to come and drive out the people who are encroaching on land uh, so you know uh, putting their uh, huts there and children are uh, uh, living there with them on the streets and all that is not our job 
So respective municipalities also have to act. They also have a role under yeah. this. Father, yeah. you tell. Yeah. Me. What happens now? See, yeah. one thing: the role of the collector. Uh, when the we bring the collector into the picture here, Correct. it becomes more of a firefighting issue. Yes. There's an issue. He has to attend to that. He has to finish yeah. his work. Regular what I'm talking system. is, yeah. What I'm talking is putting a system in place, Correct. and this responsibility cannot be entrusted to the collector. That yes. is not his role. We have the DWCD. We have got district Pro protection officers, uh, children officers. Yeah. They have to come up with some good rehabilitation program of how to attend to such type of situation as a system, yeah. not just to firefight. Someone comes, we call the collector. He one runs there. Yeah. Okay. There's a new new thing which we Same have heard now. This, uh, this was not there, which is a new thing which has been introduced, as Madam informs yeah, us now. But that is not a solution yes. to the problem. Yes. That will be only firefighting the problem, yes. and that is no uh, the systems? systems which are asking, yeah. asking. Yeah. So who should ask and yeah. who should give? And the department is there for that. No, women and child department is pro precisely for that. Yes. Officers are to be appointed. Yes. Recruitment has to be done. They have to be. Train for that work yes. and this and and get them operative the system. The law is asking for this, yeah. and the law is not being implemented. Yeah. So law has to be implemented. Particularly now, in yeah. rehabilitation of children, if they are from the other state, then there is a process by which this transfer has to take place. If they are from here, we've got to attend to that. So a system has to be functional. Yeah. Yes, and also now yeah. when you speak, it becomes clear that. If things are not done, that is a violation of human rights. Mm -hmm. Correct. Then what happens? We have a commission, three-member commission. Does it intervene in this kind of cases? What is the experience? You know, the bodies now, the commission for children's rights is there. Yes. Very specific, you know. It is there. I mean, that is also one yes. specific one, area yeah. by to bring this into their purview. Correct. But th for that to happen also, a functional system has to be place yeah. in place. Yes. Then we can say that, okay, this has not been done by this particular officer and therefore we refer the matter to the uh, Commission for Correct. Children's Rights. Correct. And they take it up, that why you're not functioning according to the yes. law. They can after us pull up them. Yeah. So, but system has to be in place. This is what is our cry for yes. uh, a system and to be I, placed. Yeah, please. And like, I fully agree, you know, we feel sorry for them. Yeah. But we feel that's it till that time. Correct. After that, we are we are not ready to take that extra mile. Yeah. But, uh, me, with what I mean, yeah. citizens as such, like I said, I even fully agree. We should discourage them from begging. Yeah. Why do we this thing? Or there has to be a system. You know, we record them. We use our mobiles for everything. Recording them. Okay, this is happening. There has to be an institution. Okay, you maintain these records. And then after uh, at the time when they are deciding that you know these are the children, how, how many times they are coming? Yes. Yeah, these are yes. the record. It should not be given to. I don't know. I'm not saying not be given, but as they say, the child, the family, and all. Either the um, adults have to be penalized. This yes. is like in traffic. The uh, the you see so minors driving. How come? Why is the this thing? Why are the parents keeping quiet? Why are the parents keeping quiet as far as not wearing the helmet is concerned? I myself, I told myself, the day I see you without a helmet, that is the last day you will drive. Something has to be yes. done. Yes. The yes. parents who are putting these children in such a situation, Addition. they need to be penalized. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and they should be a, held responsible. There is a law for that, but I think police also is reluctant to book them. <laughs> okay, they are supposed to be penalized. Yeah. I feel that some awareness for everybody, every segment which comes in play here needs to be done. So, uh, correct. The, I don't think awareness is an issue. So okay. I also feel that all of us act very safely. Sometimes it is political pressure, sometimes it is related to our positions and our jobs. Mm. Uh, many a times we find when we are rescuing children on the street, we get calls from that MLA. Okay. We've, we've ha it's happened Happens. with both the CWCs, North and yeah. South, yeah. that they call us and tell, why are you holding that child, please release. So police also doesn't want to get into all this, okay. Mm. So our lawmakers, our legislators, our representative of our states only, you know, are somewhere also part of this whole system. Mm. So they also then sometimes need to take a stand as to when they will say no and when they will take a firm decision that this is not acceptable, therefore I will not take it up, you know, for this kind of a yes, issue. Yes, yes. What you have to say, Dr. Ramdas? 
having heard this three major stalwarts right. giving only wisdom yeah. i have a partial solution yeah how many probation officers does the department of women uh, women and child development have and how many vacant posts exist okay. i don't think that data if i quote to you you will get you will be flabbergasted yeah. the posts have been dormant or rather dead or the posts have not been revived at all there is only one person functioning as a probation officer this is to be the data that i obtained from the department itself with rti with rti and like that if i the amount of rti i have spent over 1000 rupees to get the copies and the data that i have is enough for me to file a writ petition in the high court which I, it, even to go to the high court is not a joke what i plead with the department is to make an action plan and after they make the action plan submit it to their health secretary and thereafter to their honorable minister i am sure that the secretary of the child welfare department as well as the minister are definitely positive people and they will give a solution provided when we make the petition say that this august body desires to have an implementation of this in letter and spirit within 4 weeks from the day the application goes with an action plan if this be done i am sure that we will have something crystallized so i have a suggestion okay just like i said uh, yesterday i was a part of this training in delhi mm. they have come out with a citizen portal so now it will not be the police or the child line who will be telling us okay. you as a citizen if you are seeing a child in the street you are seeing a child whose rights are getting violated either is abuse neglect whatever the case may be you can go and register your complaint you can offer your services to the government the government now will be mandated to have a data of such people volunteers they could be experts teachers doctors and the state will then will have to take uh, you know will have to utilize these resources it's precisely for this it's uh, this is not a problem only in goa okay? correct and correct. goa is a small state with yes. just two district if you think this is huge then you have you had to hear what the other cws is were saying yesterday and we were in shock so the point is this uh, yes things have changed maybe till that point you all were uh, you, know, you know the state was uh, liberated things were different but the massive uh, advertisement and the tourist uh, you know publicity that the state has got mm. it will come with its own problems it will not the solutions will not come up so quickly it will take time it's not that easy mm. you may have most effective and efficient team working but that the society and the family is continuously changing it's organic it's not static mm. you know there are external factors Correct. which influence Correct. people me as an individual me as family and as a community and as a state Correct. so to fight that i have to continuously upgrade my knowledge my skills and face those problems sometimes as a state we may not be equipped to handle yes we we've had people who don't want to work beyond 5 o'clock what are you going to do the work culture also comes into play we do we want people we we have people who don't want to go beyond their house to do work they want to work somewhere close to their houses so when you are working with children and especially on such vulnerable you know situation Section. you cannot have uh, you know an attitude and approach like this that goes across <coughs> for all department and everybody yeah. i'm not talking about women and child even cwc you have to be available 365 days 24 7 so That's now you said that a portal would be there yes. how it will function it, there is a portal where you register yourself now for example sir just said that he sees children on the uh, you right. know signals at margao and all you go put your name register uh, you know mention the place and all this portal now directly gives the information to national uh, ncpcr national commission for okay. child protection okay. okay the state has to uh, act otherwise there is a red flag on the state there is a time bound uh, period by this period if you don't act there is a going, there's going to be you know review and uh, supervision and questions asked to you as to why you are not able to handle now, this uh, this is going <coughs> to happen in all cases Okay. with regards to children who are in the streets with regards to children who are sexually abused with regards to missing. children missing everything okay. 
Okay. So every state now, including CWC. So okay, kind of accountability. Accountability will come. and strict monitoring. Okay. So that even CWC, okay. we are also not scared. Okay. So even we are going to be monitored. How many sittings? How many visits are you going uh, doing in a month? Everything. So father, as a helpline director, how you respond to this? Will this help in a big way? What do you think? This is something new information we are getting. Yes. But the point is, when the when the helpline goes with the cases to the concerned departments or concerned persons, yeah. the response has been so poor. Yeah. Now the portal will going to monitor this is a something very <coughs> regressive steps personally. I feel Theoretical. you cannot expect the person who is a doctor and a, a, a engineer. A, to run after a case, one case, and when when I when is he going to attend no, no, to his no, duties? That is not no. No. no, So I, I, let yeah. me come to the yeah. point. So once this person gets once person registers this thing, who is going to monitor this? Who is going to take the case ahead? Those details are worked out. I'm not that, aware yes, of that. Yes. But we are not so, aware of any. Yeah, That's please. what you're saying. So the department will share it with you all very soon. So department has not been able to put its own functions as far as the officers in place for so many years. Yeah. We are, this is a cry from the people. Yeah. People are asking um, to appoint them so that they can be functional and operative. Correct. Now this is something left to them. And who is going to monitor this? NCPCR from no. one place will monitor all these things. These are questions to be raised by people who are directly in the yeah. field yeah. and find, finding this, uh, no answers at present. Yeah. Right. And something else is being thrust again with no accountability. This is a very sorry. So Step towards something which had to so be progressive, become aggressive. Yeah. Portal is getting functional in December. <coughs> okay. I think everybody, I, uh, they will be uh, giving, uh, you know, the link and all for all. Hmm. And it will be nice uh, for everybody to go through it. It's not only for authorities, it is for citizens of this country also. It is quite uh, citizen friendly and accessible to all. And uh, I, I don't know, personally as a professional, who has worked with children and not sitting in the office. I have been in field yeah. for 20 years. So I know that it was an excellent thing that has been planned and it, uh, we will have some issues. There will be some hiccups. I'm not saying that it's going to be perfect. Mm. But the, the amount of work and thinking that has gone in developing this portal is really good. There has to be monitoring, there has to be accountability for everybody, including the Department of Women and Child. Mm. Somebody has to be answerable. Maybe the state dynamics are different. Mm -hmm. National dynamics are different. Yeah. So Other in Goa, uh, like uh, helpline, how many calls, say, on a weekly basis, uh, on an average, how many calls you get? We get at least 40 to 50 cases on a, uh, in one unit. Yes. Yeah. So that adds up to close to seven, 800. Uh, per month. No, not per month. Per per a for, yeah. Uh, so this is how the whole thing functions. Who is going to respond to yeah. this mammoth? So mammoth uh, people who are <coughs> already in the in the field are facing these things, reporting different cases. Is the portal going to manage this? How is it going to manage? These are really yeah. disturbing yeah. So questions. We really disturbing to, questions. Yeah, we will have to yeah. see that. Yeah. Uh, um, maybe when you know when you. The simple so existence of the present yeah. situation is, we don't have operative. Child protection officers appointed, Basically, unfunctional way of function. Mm -hmm. And what is the role now they are going to play when unappointed persons are there? And this is not just one month or two months, it's yeah. for years this yeah. has gone on. No but child I protection have... officers in the state. Yeah. Yeah. And the portal will so resolve these issues is my big question. No, that I agree. Yeah. One needs to orient oneself. So, uh, now, moreover, yeah. moreover, even the collectors, uh, they so motu cannot work. They need the help of the police department. And when a proposal comes from the police department, they will go ahead with them. Because so motu the collector does not have. During the Portuguese time, the Mamladar, the Regidor, they had the authority. But today, it has been, uh, I mean, going on a decline. So even then, you need to have the appointment of certain ambassadors who could be the promoters, who could assist them if they are women officers, go with them and see that justice is given, provided there is a system in force to see that they will get a good, decent living thereafter and they will not go for begging. Because the syndicate has to be eliminated. So when we come to this syndicate, 
often what happens is police also will deal with the last point but what happens to Pardeh ke piche behind these syndicates interstate kind of they are operating how to tackle them yeah, you have to understand, there are two things in it. One is, uh, na, na, all these things operate generally outside Kuala. Yes. There is, I mean, this is a racket. Correct. Okay, now, and let's accept that this is mostly a social problem no. that is happening in Goa. It is, uh, because our, maybe our state is progressing much better as far as tourism sector. All Social these and things. economic, yeah. because this yes. crime-related yeah. economic system. Now, our, our this thing, police will restrict ourselves only to crime and uh, this yeah. thing. Okay, now, if there is a link, if there is a link from across the state, yes, then uh, you will find that the police will get proactive. But others, yes, because of so many things, we will re uh, refine and we will uh, we will uh, restrict ourselves to these things. Yeah. Okay, you uh, you want protection, we'll give it to you. You want to be taken somewhere, yes. You want to go to the Mamla, then yeah. we will let this thing. You want to go to CWC, yes. I mean, our police stations are designed. Our officers are uh, even uh, uh, looked into it. But when it becomes these social problems, you know, it becomes rather difficult unless it becomes your, as you said, it be, it is a racket. You see, like only during the season they come. Yeah. Now, how do you go? You have to find out, go back, go back, go back. It's a lot of dedication uh, yeah. that is. Uh, if you remember, one of our uh, present ministers, I will not name, but he was MLA then. On the floor of the house, he said, special people are brought to beg here from Bihar and other states. Like that also some statements were made. Yeah, the thing is, our, yeah. a thing is so porous. Yes. You can enter and get off the state of Goa within an yes. hour. Yeah. It's either north, south. Yeah. I mean, the trains that are coming. Yeah. Uh, are we, uh, our, is our infrastructure geared up for so much yeah. of this? We thing? look like a corridor for yeah. this kind of That's a, this people. Thing. Uh, because the number of vehicles. Kids are victims. Yeah. We can't call them uh, as accused. They are victims of all these yeah. whole things. Yeah. So I think we are coming to the end of this uh, program on child helpline. So child helpline is actually a blessing for children, for their parents, for missing children. And all these issues are connected and they need a comprehensive solution. It cannot be just one agency or one CWC or a person like our Dr. Sapeko who is heart bleeds when he sees such thing. It has to be a comprehensive and a synchronized effort. What we insist, what we feel today at the end of this discussion is that starting with the government department of yeah, women and child development, then the departmental structure, staff pattern, everything needs to be properly studied and done properly updated. And then I think all agencies should should know should be synchronized and coordinated. I remember Father, you were also part of it. We had a child network. We used to have meetings here only in the Piedad Hall here down that uh, various NGOs working for child rights is to come together at least once in a month or something. Lot of issues we used to do this. The and we used to take up with various agencies. Something like that on one side and government coordinating various departments like police, collectors, all these, perhaps with the help of citizens, I think this issue needs to be resolved because Helpline is there, helpline works and gives the immediate relief beyond that what? When sure. children come to you, what exactly happens to them? Again and again they get into the same criminal grind or they are actually rehabilitated or given to their parents. That is the solution. If it doesn't come, then we are nowhere. So before ending this, I expect one sentence from each of my, uh, this, starting with uh, Dr. Sapeko. I feel that at the end of the day, we can give this uh, 
solution to the government, that is the Honorable Minister and Honorable Secretary, with a solution plan, I am sure that we will achieve our dream within a period of four weeks' time from today. Esther. So, uh, there is this. I strongly believe that this, uh, there will always be challenges in life. There will always be some push and pulls for our children and the family. But uh, uh, we will have to just ensure that we make our children so strong that they will be able to cope with all the challenges that they come across or they face. We will have to just make our children strong. Some things are beyond our control. Social, economical, political factors are not in our control, but children can be molded, can be made strong and whatever we can do to make them, uh, you know, resilient to these forces, uh, we should do. As individuals, as agencies, as governments, we should do that. Uh, Mr. Bosco, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, all goons have to act like how doctor acts. Yeah. We have to work that extra mile. We otherwise are only fit for complaining. Correct. Who is the organization, which is the government, we only know to complain. Yeah. But you ask him to come, Baba Maso, you have a yeah. uh, complaint, yeah. you will find him running away five uh, kilometers. Yes. We just grumble. We are grumblers of the first order, okay. especially we go and I will say that this yeah. thing, we don't want to take that extra mile to come forward. Yeah. And until we become as concerned citizen we see what is happening we come uh, th uh, you spend a little time come on let's go i uh, now what do i police station what who are you police station is some uh, this thing so we have and uh, we as citizens have to become really concerned citizens yeah. i feel yeah father i have a special this to you because you have a structure of helpline you have people girls and boys working for this helpline when results don't come out, naturally such people get demoralized so that they don't and they work as real friends of helpline. You, uh, your word I expect. Yeah, I would like to say that a child has to be given an opportunity to enjoy their childhood. The responsibility of the best interests of the child is also, apart from the parents, the state government. The state government is responsible for the rights of children and they cannot stay away from this. It is their responsibility to see that every child is in school, every child has got a childhood which is they can enjoy their childhood. So the comprehensive plan of protecting a child in the best in, in, in their best interest is a responsibility by taking all the stakeholders. I'm not staying away from as a social organization. We would be uh, willing to contribute to this Plan. We would be wanting to see such a plan happen, but the coordination has to be because yes. if we do this, it won't be respected, it won't be accepted, it will be thrown as an NGO okay. initiative. Okay. The government has to take this, engaging all the NGOs which are working for children, organizations which are there, the systems uh, which are providing like CWC, commissions, whichever organizations are there, the boards which are there, they have to come together and form this plan. Yes. So that, that should be the end result of uh, the best interests of the child. As uh, rightly said by uh, Father uh, Mavri Fernandes, that this is a coordinated job of entire society. Government has to lead and coordinate this effort. There are NGOs, there is helpline. Helpline will be friend of people only when solutions come out. Just getting the child is not the end of it. It is just first part of it. So, as he said rightly, this solution should come out. Finally, child should be able to live its childhood. And that is what is the aim of the welfare society. So, I thank all my uh, friends on this uh, distinguished panel for coming here and expressing your views. And I hope people will also appreciate this and will always, as uh, um, our uh, DIG has said that people should not simply sit and grumble. We should come out, come out and cooperate, coordinate. And at time comes, then uh, like Dr. Sapeko said, I put RTI and get this information. You should be proactive. Then only we are conscious citizens. 
of this country and Goa. So it is up to all of us. Thank you for this wonderful uh, discussion on helpline. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.